Hello and welcome to an F- another FYI podcast. My name is Alan Morales and I'm here with my co-host. Maria Leandro and Vanessa. Today's topic is going to be taking summer classes and some of the tips that you can use. Um, so let's start with Vanessa. What do you think uh, students uh, that are going to be taking summer classes should uh, look into before actually going in? I feel like taking classes is like um, so you can be advanced in whatever you want in your major or your degree. Um, I think um, you have to be aware of like how you like what your progress is and like if you feel like oh like I want to advance in the summer so I can take these extra classes or like it just depends on you sometimes people have to repeat classes mm-hmm. so they do that in the summer so it, it all depends on everyone well okay. that's a good time um, so in my perspective or in the experience that I had uh, a long time ago <laughs> not, not any time soon um, I usually took um, either two or if I could, three easy classes uh, to get ahead. And if I needed a really big uh, and hard class, let's say mathematics, I would only take one. Um, I don't know what's your perspective on that, but I think that if you're doing any math or science, you should only take one, unless you can, and I mean really stretch your time for two, because those topics, you have to cover them in six weeks, and that's a lot of information to be learn and process in six weeks um, mm-hmm. and to add to that is that when you take summer classes in campuses you come every day monday to friday yeah you will have cl- homework every day in a way um or what are your uh, experience in the summer classes well i took two summer classes um last year one was actually study abroad so that was one of my classes that just instead of taking it here i took it over there in the uk and then I also took another one in summer too, an online class, a government, so I can go ahead. Oh, how did that go? It was, it was, I mean, it was the first time I, I took a, an online, online class. And I guess at the beginning, it's kind of like weird. You're like, okay, like, how does this work? Do I have to like go to a lecture? Is there something specifically like that? It was pretty much just assignments, like, like she does give you a syllabus and tells you okay like this day you have to take by this day you have to turn it in and everything and just yeah i mean you just take, it's just like a regular class but faster learn, mm-hmm. or, uh, some, somewhat faster yeah. yeah sometimes like there's information like a lot of information because i mean it's only six like, weeks i think we did you know yeah, yeah six yeah, weeks um so for the freshman students um that are coming in and uh, want to take summer classes, I will personally, or in my uh, personal tip, is to first look at your path that you have, look at the classes that you need to take, and see which ones are, I don't know if it's better for you, but maybe the easiest to take, because it's your first summer. You don't want to overwhelm yourself, um, but you also want to, you know, get ahead. So um, look at your degree plan, and choose the class that you think you will do well, and you will actually be able to get an A or a B, but aim for that A. Don't always take the hardest class, because that's going to make it uh, harder to pass, and it's going to hurt your GPA. Mm-hmm. I, I took a, a science class during the summer. It was a lot, because especially during like a regular summer, uh, fall or spring, you go to lab one day out of the week. During the summer, you go every day as well. So it's a lot of information to take in. I feel like there's a lot of factors when it comes Mm -hmm. to taking summer classes. I mean, one of them, obviously, it's financial aid. Yeah. For those, I mean, in my experience, I received the Pell Grant. So um, for the semester itself, like for the whole year, I am supposed to take at least 12 hours and have a 2.5 GPA. And I think it's almost the same requirements in the summer. So in, a, in order to receive uh, the Pell Grant in the summer, you have to take at least six hours, which is like 
classes. Two classes. It can either be like one in summer one or one in summer two. Mm-hmm. And there's also like a summer boost. Yeah, the summer booster. Okay. Yeah, you yeah. just uh, you have to become aware. Like I think it I think it started like in January or in February. The summer notification, mm-hmm. which is very easy to just. You just put your name, your ID, ID, your email, and then you just submit it. You mm-hmm. just wait. Yeah. No, wait. Yeah. Okay, so from us three, uh, who has taken uh, summer classes in the past two years? Well, me. Yeah. Okay, I have. So I have some questions. Um, for the classes that you took, uh, I know that you say that you go come every day. Um, does the teacher already give you like? Uh, schedule like these days we're gonna we should be covering this and Friday is a test or how does it work? How is the class structure in a way? Who is the same does the there's still high expectations and everything as a regular full semester course For me uh, if, I mean if first year students want to study abroad like it's the same thing like for me that first week, the summer one, that when classes started, I was actually, we met here at the university and they gave us a structure of like an introduction to the class. So we mm-hmm. actually had class, PowerPoint and everything. And then he started giving us uh, the syllabus, the information for or, over there, like in Scotland, what we're gonna see and in London and everything. And we were already assigned our projects. And then when we were over there, I mean, we did have class, we went to presentations, but we also had like our free time and stuff. And like, there was a specific day where we all had to finish this project and we all like, we booked a, like a room there at the university uh, or where we were staying and we were all doing our homework. <laughs> <laughs> um, you, you're talking about a project. Does every class have a summer project that you need to study? I mean, I think it depends on the class. So for first year students, I don't know what classes they would take. I think some of the classes that more students take is either politics, because mm-hmm. yeah. I think you can take them in the summer. Yeah. Um, sometimes they take Chem 1, Gen Chem 1, or if they got ahead in before, Gen Chem 2, and the lab. Or they will be taking uh, higher math. Like pre calculus or calculus or those. Well, I know my sister, she like she she's gonna work in a minor and she said, Okay, I'm gonna focus in my minor only on summer. But and that's I thought it was pretty smart that she's gonna during the school year, the whole school year she's gonna be focusing just her major, major and then summer minor. I was like, Oh that's 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 a good idea to go that way too. Yeah. That that I never thought about too. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's pretty smart. <laughs> I think it depends. It depends on what you're you're taking, mm-hmm. and you you know you guys already alluded to like your degree plan, your roadmap. Yeah. So, for example, Alan, what's your major? I'm a chemist. Okay. So, as a chemistry major, you're going to have a lot of science, right, every semester. Yeah. So, let's say you have a, a minor, um, and let's say your minor is not in the sciences. Let's say it's psychology or philosophy or you know something like that, right? Um, it it might be best to kind of spread out. Like, so while you take two sciences, maybe throw in some of your minor courses. So it just all depends on the, on your major and what you're, what you're taking. And then if you're going to do a minor, um, I think some of the, a lot of the factors that you guys already alluded to is financial aid, right? Financial aid, one in the summer isn't always guaranteed. Um, so one thing I think we need to tell the audience is, uh, financial aid is often dependent on how much money is available after the first the fall and the spring semesters because mm-hmm. those are like those monies are guaranteed and then it's it depends on how many students want to come in the summer which is like why we do the summer notification that gives financial aid a head count like a, a ahead of time like mm-hmm. oh we have a thousand students that want to do summer so then they can figure out okay based on enrollment and based on how many hours they're taking right because for the most part you have to take six hours in the summer in order to get the full financial aid that you would receive. Now, when we say you're going to get the full financial aid, that doesn't mean you're going to get it all paid for, right? A lot of times you still have to pay out of pocket. Yeah. Um, the other thing to think about, so if you're, if I'm a student and I'm trying to decide, oh, do I, do I want to take summer classes? Uh, <laughs> well, uh, for that answer, the question, I will answer 
te voy a answer personally. Uh -huh. I will first uh, check how I felt after my fall uh -huh. and see if I can still keep going because I, I know sometimes I myself take a lot of really heavy classes during the school year. I need a mental cool down. Uh -huh. But if I okay. think, um, let's say I'm taking Yankam 1 and I have everything fresh and I think I can do Yankam 2, I'll go for it. But otherwise, I would recommend that student to take a break because it's a summer for a reason. It's for you to take a breather and kind of pick up your marbles in a way mm -hmm. and just get ready for the next year. So the other thing that I would recommend also is like a lot of times it's, it's, um, it's easy for us to kind of focus on where we're at right now. So I might be a sophomore, I might be a junior, right? I might be a first year student. And I'm getting ready, like, okay, after this summer coming up. Um, but it's, it's okay to look ahead and to say, like, what is my ultimate goal? So my ultimate goal is to become a doctor. My ultimate goal is to become, uh, to go to grad school and maybe in chemistry, right? Get a master's or a PhD. And then the summers become very critical in terms of strategy. And so then I've got to figure out, how do I make the most of my summers? So am I going to A, take classes? Am I going to B, work? Or C, maybe do something else to enrich like me as a student, as an individual, and make me look more competitive, like a study abroad, or possibly do research. Mm -hmm. Because if I'm gonna to go to graduate school, right? Graduate school is already very competitive. Yeah. So I need to figure out how do I separate myself from other students that might have similar GPAs or maybe even might have better GPAs than me. Mm -hmm. So um, community work and the things you do, like yeah. So and then so I think I think you figure out you you factor in the summer into how do I how can I use the summer to improve myself as like individually or personally, but also as a candidate for whatever yeah. it is. I for jobs for for graduate school, for professional school, whatever it is that I want to do down the road. And so a lot of times students like are just focused on like the here and now, but it's good to think about like long term, what are my goals? Because I can factor in my summer into those goals, into those plans. So not necessarily you take summer classes, you see other alternatives to kind of broaden, broaden your uh, resume? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, you know, every, every student is different and every scenario is different. I, I think one thing that you mentioned is like the students at the end of the, of the year should always kind of like reflect. And like if it was a really rough semester, or a really rough year, maybe I do need the time to decompress. But, it, if, uh, but also use that time to think about like strategically again long term. Like do I want to build my resume or can I use this opportunity to build my resume? So okay. for, for example, I never, like I never took summer classes. And I would always... I didn't know. <laughs> Some like, well, no, I knew they existed. I didn't know what I wanted to do. Uh -huh. So for like the first year students that are listening, even if you don't know what you want to do, like I didn't know what I was going to do when I graduated. I wasn't sure. Um, but I would in the summer, what I would do is I would I would get uh, I would apply for research funding, and so every summer I would go home and I would do research in my community. Because I liked that, but it was also an opportunity for me to, it was like work, it was a job, yeah. but it was through the university and it was paid through like work study. Oh. Uh, and so there are a lot of opportunities, whether it's through like work study, whether it's um, research, like through grants and things like that. There are a lot of opportunities. And, and so for students, um, one, take advantage of resources. Um, talk to your professors, talk to other students, maybe talk to upperclassmen if you know any. To figure out okay what opportunities are there for me and so like I you know I, that's that's what I but I always encourage students to to think about well, what's your like overall plan what's your big what are your big goals your big dreams how can you use the summer to help yourself get there because during the school year you're taking care of your classes mm -hmm. well, but yeah. otherwise outside of that what else are you doing are you gonna you you silly? But you know, you, it's it's all about by finding balance, right? It's yeah. always about and finding balance. Even in the summer, if you don't like, for example, this last summer, I didn't take summer classes, um, but I was doing. Um, I was working. I was 
volunteering that was doing different things to just not only like get a like experience personally but also make uh, my resume grow but uh, I didn't know I was doing that it's just that I felt like I was a little lazy <laughs> <laughs> no think of it as you're you're improving your your brand you're improving the Allen brand it's like hey look if you if you hire me you get all this <laughs> um, but I think that it should be something that a lot of the summer students do. They should, uh, like you said, uh, look uh, ahead. If you can, uh, take summer classes. If not, just do little things to uh, get experience and make your resume better in a way. Um, and well, any to go, thoughts? Uh, to go back to thinking ahead, I think it's important to that because, like, Let's say in my case, I applied to my program during the spring and I, I decided, okay, I want to take this summer classes, but let's say, oh, I don't make it to the program. Why would I take summer classes if I won't have like anything to take in the fall? So maybe signing up to the classes to summer. I did sign up for classes for summer, but I always have that plan B. Okay, what if I don't make it? I will, won't take the class in the summer and take it in the fall so my financial aid can still go in as well. Yeah. So I always have like a plan B, a backup for everything too. So, That's a good so great think, idea. So Don't think look up, too think ahead. ahead. Yeah. Well, no, I think she's she's mm -hmm. looking well ahead, yeah. but she has a plan B. Mm -hmm. She's yeah. looking at all of her options. Yeah. So okay. I, I think like, so we we have to we have to wrap up. Um, so like what, what, so she said, have a plan B. Mm -hmm. What piece of advice would you give students? If you had one piece of advice to give them about summer classes. Do something you can do and enjoy and get experience from. Okay. That's it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Just, um, yeah, you pretty much said it all. <laughs> uh, I know you have a... I mean, I guess just... Stay positive. It's like, even if you don't take summer classes, like it won't hurt you. Like the only thing you can like just improve. Huh. And then yeah. it won't knock you down. Just get back up. Mm -hmm. um, well, this will be conclude the FYE podcast. Thank you for listening. Bye -bye. Thank you.